hello good morning good day afternoon good evening god bless you um thank you for being there once again i have a video clip i want to show you and um it is not actually my video but uh, i found it interesting i want to make something clear that uh okay i've actually been saying it that i don't have anything against people giving offering and tithe in the church i I have not found any scripture that condemns it all right but then i have something against preachers who make this their predominant message who you know who are um hampering on this as if this is just the only message they've got actually um the video you're gonna watch is about is uh, a kind of uh, pastors on two divides you know maybe i shouldn't even say too much so that you go ahead and wash it Woo! put some money put some anointing on this money you better believe the topic was not the gospel the topic was not you know come and have your sins forgiven Come and repent and believe, no. Make the vow now and then obey the Lord and sow that seed and watch what God will do with you. You know what it was, come get your blessing. If you sow money, you won't reap money. <laughs> come get your miracle. Come get your deliverance. Come get your, and the list goes on and on. I am healthy. I am healthy. I am confident. These are the things that thousands flock to. As always, thank you so much for watching. Fear of this, this coronavirus is, is faith in its ability to hurt you or kill you. Uh, <clears throat> the, 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 the fear of what are we going to do? I'm getting laid off at work. Hey, your job's not your source. Mm -hmm. If it is, you're in trouble. Jesus is your source. Whatever you do right now, don't you stop tithing. Mm. Don't you stop sowing offerings. Well, they won't let us go to church. Well, email it in there, text the give or something, but you get your tithe in that church. If you have to go take it down there and drop it off and unstick it under the door or something, right, you right. get that tithe in that church, you get that offering in that church, and then you go home and you do what we're supposed to do. God will always use whatever you got left. The, the, the blessing isn't in what you lost. The blessing is in what you got left. And if you will sow what you got left, God said, I'll give you back whatever it was. Oh my God. Slap somebody and tell him he's getting ready to come back. Everything you lost, everything you lost, everything that got away from you, everything that slipped away, God said, I'm getting ready to give it back to you. But the supernatural is when you can throw in a stick and reap back an axe. See, I don't want to just talk to people who need to reap money because that's just natural. If you pick up the phone and sow money, you don't even need an anointing. If you sow money, you're going to reap money. But I want to talk to some people who need to reap something that money cannot buy. And the kind of trouble you're in, money can't get you out of it. But if you throw in what you do have, 
God will give you what you don't have. What the man did, he, he threw in a stick. You say, I need restoration in my marriage. I, I'm, I'm going to sow this seed. I'm not worried about no financial return. But, but, but hook, this, hook this family problem up. Fix it. Fix it. Turn, somebody say, turn it around. Uh, 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 my, my job is kind of shaky and I, I need a breakthrough tonight. And, and I'm going to sow because I need God to turn it around. And somebody say, turn it around. And, and so what Elijah did, he, he reached back and he, and he got a stick. And he threw the stick over in the water. The, the axe had gone so far down in the water that the waters were still until he threw in the stick. You've been in trouble so long. Nothing is moving. And it looks like it's not going anywhere. But I dare you to obey God tonight because God's getting ready to trouble the waters in your life. Touch your neighbor and say, I feel movement coming. In, in that area where there's been no activity for months and months and months in your life, God said, I'm going to give you some movement. You need to move so God can move. God said he would move if you would move. They all claim the same thing. As a Christian, you have the personal power to recreate life's reality into exactly what you want it to be. And they do it in the name of Jesus. All this in the name of Jesus. It is a lie. It is a blasphemous lie. It is a lie that preys on the weak and the desperate and preys on the people who have nothing but fallen, corrupt, unregenerate, normal human desires. Oh, it works. It makes the predators rich because everybody sends them the money. That's how you trigger it. That's how you prove your faith. And everybody else is disappointed. What is the source of this? Where does this come from? Answer, Satan. This is satanic. This is satanic. This is not just off-center. This is satanic. Why do I say that? Because health, wealth, prosperity, the fulfillment of all your dreams and your desires, that's what Satan always offers. That's called temptation based on the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. That's exactly what corrupt, fallen, unregenerate people want. That's why it works so well, right? You can go right into Satan's system, make everybody feel religious, and turn a, their desires, their temptations into somehow honorable desires. Here's what you need to do. You need to make a vow to God and say, Lord, I want to do such and such for you. Please bring me out of this problem. You will see God move on your behalf real fast. Because in every case, even in the Bible, it was instant. Why don't you do that? Why don't you make a financial vow to the Lord right now while I'm talking to you? If you're facing a problem. And watch what God will do with you. And I said, Lord, I'm going to give you again another amount for the poor. Believe me, God answered that prayer within minutes. The next day, the miracle happened. I needed a hundred thousand dollars by morning to solve a problem. And God Almighty spoke to me again to make a vow, and I did. And I paid that vow. Do it today. Watch what God will do with you. What you've done for me, do for them, Lord. They, they'll, they'll see a miracle happen quickly, supernaturally, in Jesus' mighty name. And God's people said, Amen and Amen. You know, you can right now go online, our website, and just say, I'm going to make a vow today to the Lord. And you don't have to give any details of what you need, but just sow a seed as a vow to the Lord. Make the vow now and then obey the Lord and sow that seed and watch what God will do with you. Lord, I thank you for the miracle coming to each one of them. It will begin this weekend. It will happen this week in Jesus' mighty name for your glory as you've done for me. Do it for your people. Amen and amen. I want to hear about your miracle. Isn't it amazing? All these, all these 
popular TV preachers, many of them. There's some good ones, a few of them. But most of these popular guys, when it comes to the doctrine of hell, they'll go, well, we don't, you know, we just want to teach on the words of Jesus. Now, either when they say that, they're either immoral or stupid. Why? Because you want to know something? If it were not for the teachings of Jesus Christ, we'd, almost, we'd know almost nothing about hell. Almost no one else in the Bible talks about hell. You see glimpses of hell. Almost everything we know. If you're going to write a book on the biblical doctrine of hell, you will spend almost all your time, 99% of your time, in the Gospels. Because Jesus is just about the only one who ever taught on hell. So when Robert Schuller gets up and says, I don't teach on hell because I just want to teach the words of Jesus, he's a liar. Because Jesus spoke on hell more than absolutely everybody else put together. I've often wondered why that is. Maybe he was the only one who could make known its terrors. Maybe he's the only one brave enough. Maybe he's the only one who loves enough. Where are all the sermons on hell? Where did they go? Is getting your best life now really what's important? Wouldn't it be better to rot in a prison for all the 80 years of your life and be saved from hell rather than to get your best life now and perish? I will not lose sleep. Understand this. Worrying about whether or not you have self-esteem. I will not lose sleep worried about whether or not you feel like you have purpose in your life. I will not lose sleep. I will not be interceding tonight because your checkbook doesn't balance. It'll be because you're going to hell. That's why we preach. Verse 32, and we preach to you. Please, note, they didn't share They preached, they heralded, they declared, they announced. That's what preachers do. Listen, if you're a barber and you don't cut hair, you're not a barber. If you're a taxi cab driver and you don't drive a car, you're not a taxi cab driver. And if you're a preacher but you don't do not preach, you're just a life coach. You're just in the way. God has called men to preach. Do I believe that God wants to bless us? Yes. But when you go to the conferences, you ask people to give money. So yeah. You say, do it cheerfully. Yeah. Because As the Bible says, give and it shall be given unto you. Say, so giving is a major part of the whole Christian doctrine. But do you believe that if someone gives money to the ministry, that more will come back to them? Yes. Absolutely. I think that's what they mean by prosperity gospel. No, but you worry at all that that sometimes your message will be heard by someone in the most dire circumstances. It's a sort of roulette wheel, a sort of gamble with God. Okay, well, I can't pay the rent, but I'll give it to Joyce and we'll see what happens. Do you worry at all that that happens? I totally know. I don't worry about that. Joyce Meyer says, no, I totally don't worry about that. Well, I'm sure she doesn't, but she should. Because right now, even as we speak, there are thousands of people all around the world who are watching TBN and Daystar and Lasea Broadcasting and the Word Network and all these things. And they are hearing this endless drivel of saying, you send us your money and God will give you a harvest. And there are people at home, they are poor, they are sick, they are desperate, they have sick children. And so in desperation, they get out their checkbook or they get out their credit card and they send in money to these multi-millionaire preachers who fly in private jets and who live in multi-million dollar homes. Jesse Duplantis, for example, lives in a 35,000 square foot parsonage. 
But when your wealth is gained off of preying upon the hopes and fears of hurting and sick and desperate people, there's a lot wrong with that. Oh, I I walk on this money. Woo! 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 Howdy. Woo! Get some anointing. You put some up here. Woo! Man. Woo! Put some money. Put some anointing on this money. You put some up here. You put. The answer is, but God, you're dead. I don't care how many times you've heard the illustration. You're sinking, you're drowning, you're about to go down for the last time, and God throws you the life preserver, but you got to grab it. Dead men don't grab. <laughs> you're a rotting corpse. You were not almost dead. You were not nearly dead. But you're dead. Which means that the only hope is the grace of God. But watch what happens. You were dead and now you get life. God made us alive together with Christ. You, you, you were dead but now you're alive together with Christ. This is important. This is the doctrine of regeneration. This is God making us alive. This is God making us born again. And no matter how many, how many times we hear out there in popular evangelicalism that we sort of born ourselves again, you can no more born yourself again than you born yourself the first time. <laughs> Being born again is an act of God. Being born again is a supernatural act. Being born again is something that you don't ask for, you don't have sense enough to ask for, you're dead. God does this, and it's by his grace that he does this, and it's for his glory that he does this. It is because of Christ that he does this, and it is by grace alone. We don't like this. You know, amongst these people that, you know, this video I kind of indicted, uh, you know, he's one man I truly respect. I know him. I respect him. I believe he's a man of God. But the truth is that when they say too much of everything is, is very bad, all right? When we promote giving, offering, sowing seed, paying tithes, and make them look like the exclusive message of the Christian faith, then something is wrong. Right, because at the end of this life, all these things will be forgotten here. They will be forsaken here. Right, when we collect and collect and collect and collect, and we're not yet, we are not tired of collecting. Yet, majority of the people we are collecting from have not even given their lives to Christ. Whereas the most important thing is that this person must give his life, her life to Christ first before he will be accepted. I did a video that talked about the person of the giver. All right, when Ed, uh, Cain and Abel gave, when they gave, God accepted the person of Abel first before his offering. Now, but the unfortunate thing is that we see some of these preachers, they don't even care about the person of the giver. All they want is give. If this person gives today and tomorrow he goes to hell, it's not their business. And so this is what I find, you know, uh, to be dangerous about all these things i would like you to go in and watch the video and may the good lord bless you meanwhile i will want to read your um your comment i want to know what you think about you know the subject matter i don't know really i really don't know what to talk to the video but um i have just given it what it is god bless you i'll be seeing you in the next video um shortly until i come your way i want to ask you to please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so like the video and share the link um, 
and I want to tell you again that Jesus is coming soon. You may give and receive 100 million, but then if you have not given your life to Jesus, all is vanity. And I want to tell you that the best way to give to God is that you're giving because you're persuaded. You're giving because you want to give. You're giving because you love God. Don't give because you're manipulated. Don't give because you've been promised that when you give 5000 uh, you know, $500, you're going to earn $5 million. Now, giving with that understanding is insulting God. God is not a trader, and our God is not a money doubler. He's a miracle working God. But I want to tell you something that when people come out to say, I gave five naira or five dollar and uh, I received $5,000, my friend, if that, even if it is true, um, I want to believe that you got that miracle because it was your time. Because the day you gave five dollar, there was a person in the same congregation that gave five thousand dollar and they obviously may not have received anything, you know, yet. So it is not just about you giving. It is not just about what you gave. Uh, you know, it is just that God has determined your blessing at that moment in time. Am I saying that giving is bad? Not what I'm saying. Am I saying that God doesn't honor our giving? No, that isn't what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that you must give because you are persuaded to give. Uh, let me not you know, stress it so much. Watch the video and let us know what you think about it. God bless you from me to you. Shalom.